Episode 110, Welcome to the Family. Mr. Ambrose, your car is right here. After finding out that Mr. Cthulhu is planning to deliver it to you personally, the Ferrari managers in New York also wanted to ensure that it would reach you safely. Mr. Cthulhu hired an armored truck to transport your car to ensure that it didn't get damaged. Thank you. Alex smiled at Mr. Cthulhu. Mr. Ambrose, I'll get the car down for you now, Harold said, and he signaled to two heavily armed men who were standing beside the armored transport vehicle. The two men, still carrying their machine guns, went to the back of the truck and used their keys to open the lock. They opened the door and lowered a ramp, allowing Harold to slowly drive out the car that was stored inside. It was a white Ferrari. Just its appearance and shape alone were more stunning than Brian's. Harold stepped out of the car saying, Mr. Ambrose, this is the car you ordered. It's also the most valuable car ever sold by Ferrari. Let me introduce this car to you. He pressed the car's key fob and all the lights lit up. Some were blue and some were gold. The car door and trunk started moving at the same time. It didn't look like a car, but a futuristic transformer. Harold told Alex, Your car was designed by the top ten designers and engineers in our company. It's different from any other car we've ever manufactured in the past. It really is unique. According to your specifications, all the parts and components of this car are of the highest quality in the industry. For the tires, for example, we communicated with the executives of Michelin and had them use only the very best cutting-edge technology. He continued, Of course, this car of yours is not just a simple car. It can drive up to a depth of six feet underwater without admitting a drop of water, whilst maintaining the same functionality as it has on land. There is also every possibility that you could fly across the Hudson River in it. For most cars, this would be extremely challenging. But because of the unique body design of this car, it should be possible. It has the highest level safety features available across the world, on par with those of the President's cars, he said proudly. This car incorporates the most advanced technologies in the world. For instance, the air circulation, surround sound technology, ergonomic seats, bulletproof glass. Harold continued to introduce the car to Alex. Even though he had come into contact with so many luxury cars, he still couldn't help but be obsessed with this car. Listening to Harold's introduction, the Phillips family were captivated. Their gazes never left the luxurious Ferrari that was parked in front of them. They felt honored just to have this amazing car parked by their villa. Harold continued, Mr. Ambrose, this car has the most advanced artificial intelligence technology. Please enter your fingerprints on the car keys and you will officially become its exclusive owner. He respectfully handed the car keys to Alex and under his guidance, Alex recorded his fingerprints. The family cheered. They had quickly forgotten how badly they had previously treated Alex when they thought he was a nobody. Now, in their eyes, he was the owner of the luxurious car and such an important person that even the president of the Ferrari empire treated him with respect. Now, they looked up to him. Kelly was also congratulating Alex. There was no shock in her eyes, only pride. She hadn't made a mistake, and now she knew that she had chosen a man who could give her a life of luxury. He possessed so much wealth, yet he was so calm and humble. Mr. Sharp, can this car record other people's fingerprints? Alex asked. No, this is your exclusive car and we can only record your fingerprints, Harold said apologetically. I assume that you want to allow others to drive your car? That's no problem. It has also been built into the design. Although others can't record their fingerprints, they can use the voice recognition. The technology is slightly less advanced than the fingerprint security, but as long as they have the car keys, they will be able to drive this car. Good, Alex nodded in satisfaction. He held Kelly's hand and said to Harold, Please help me record her voice now. Kelly was a little dazed. Alex was giving her the right to drive his $2 million sports car. Her family members were also moved. 
It was at this moment that they realized what an outstanding boyfriend Kelly had found. Of course, Harold agreed. He went to Kelly, raised a small microphone toward her and said, Miss, I need to record a sample of your voice. Please say a few words. Anything that comes into your head. She looked at Alex, who was also looking at her. She realized that Alex was so handsome that she couldn't help but fall in love with him. She mumbled, Alex is my perfect man. He's honest, dignified, and generous. Alex's expression froze and he turned his face away. Miss, please say a few more words. We need to record a little more, said Harold as he looked at the apparatus to record Kelly's voice. Looking at Alex, Kelly asked him with a voice full of emotion. Alex, I like you. Do you want to be with me? Alex didn't respond. Harold said happily, All right, your voice has been recorded. From now on, as long as you have keys to this car on you, you'll be able to drive it. Then he turned to Alex and said, Mr. Ambrose, do you want to try it out now? Okay, Alex responded. He lowered his body and sat in the driver's seat of the Ferrari. He glanced at Kelly and asked, Do you want to try it with me? Kelly smiled sweetly and climbed into the passenger seat. The Ferrari door closed slowly. Alex started the car, and just from the sound of the engine, everyone could tell it was a very high-end car. As Alex slowly drove the car away, the four exhaust cylinders at the back threw out four flames. This was much more impressive than Brian's car earlier, and everyone exclaimed in admiration. By the time the flames had disappeared, the Ferrari was already a hundred yards away. The family had now accepted the fact that Alex was wealthy. They felt ashamed when they remembered how they had mocked him, and if they could turn back the clock to when they first met him, they would have treated him with far more respect. Although Margaret looked calm, inside she was full of anxiety. She couldn't stop thinking that perhaps she should admit her mistakes to her granddaughter and apologize to Alex. Alex drove the car to Purple Dawn Lake. He turned to Kelly and asked, How are you feeling? He opened the roof of the car, letting in a gentle breeze. It all felt so perfect. Wonderful, replied Kelly as her hair danced in the wind. I had no idea that you were so rich. Now, can you tell me who you really are? I imagine that you already know that there aren't too many people in America with the surname Ambrose who can afford to buy a Ferrari, Alex replied. You're from the world-famous Ambrose family? Kelly asked with a slightly trembling voice. Indeed, just as Alex said, she knew that there was only one person in America named Ambrose who could afford to spend two million on a car. She asked, I... Do I still have a chance with you? Kelly started to feel anxious. She knew that there was no way that the Phillips family could match the Ambrose family. Alex thought carefully. He said, You must be prepared for my family to object to me being with you, just as your family previously objected to you being with me. In fact, the strength of my family's objection will be even greater. He was being dishonest. The fact was that Alex would marry whoever he wanted and they would become part of the Ambrose family. The truth was that he already had Debbie in his heart. He didn't want to be with anyone else. Alex coming from the Ambrose family changed everything. Within important families, marriage was all about status, and Kelly knew that his family would never accept him marrying someone like her from a small New York family. After driving around Purple Dawn Lake for a while, Alex turned the car around and they headed back toward the villa. When they were still 200 yards away, they saw Brian slowly approaching the gate of the villa in his own Ferrari. A sinister smile appeared on Alex's face. As Brian drove slowly toward the villa, he saw that the whole of the Phillips family appeared to be standing at the entrance waiting for him. He smiled to himself smugly as he opened the car door. He was about to climb out of the car when a dazzling beam of light blinded him, followed by a loud bang, causing the car to shake violently. When Brian opened his eyes, 
he saw that the car door had been crushed. He was livid that his half a million dollar Ferrari had been damaged. He jumped out of the car to find out who had hit him, only to discover that the car that hit him was not only another Ferrari, but a much more expensive one than his own. The other Ferrari reversed slowly into Brian's car, and only then did Brian realize that the person driving the other car was Alex. Does he have a Ferrari? Brian asked himself in complete shock. Suddenly, Brian heard a roaring sound. Alex had turned his car around and let the four exhaust cylinders spray fire at Brian's car. First at the car's rear, then at the car's side, and then at the front of the car. No matter how loudly Brian and Yvonne shouted and pleaded, Alex refused to stop. By the time Alex had finished with Brian's car, it was unrecognizable. Black and crushed, it looks like a pile of scrap metal. As Alex and Kelly climbed out of their car, Brian rushed over. He was boiling with rage and looking like he wanted to kill Alex. Harold quickly ordered the two security guards to intervene. They rushed over, pointing their machine guns at Brian and shouting, Don't move! Brian was so scared that he immediately backed off, covering his head with his hands, afraid of being shot. Alex turned to Harold and said, Mr. Sharp, please talk to the manager at Sky Metro Bank and ask him to compensate Brian for his car. Of course, he replied. He looked at Brian and said, Sir, please calm down. I'm the manager of the New York Auto Exhibition Center and this is Mr. Cthulhu, the president of Ferrari. We will ensure that you are compensated for your loss. Brian's mind was in complete disarray. He thought to himself, Mr. Sharp of the New York Auto Exhibition Center? Mr. Cotullo, the president of Ferrari? Why are they here? And why are they taking orders from Alex? The Phillips family all gathered around Alex. They were trying to ingratiate themselves to him, but he completely ignored them. He said loudly to Kelly, I know that your family doesn't want me here. A wave of denials emanated from various members of the Phillips family, but again, Alex ignored them. He continued, For this reason, I think it's better if I just leave. Have a good life, he shouted as he climbed into the Ferrari.